it's a good sign that we've seen a fairly steady, steady stream of positive indicators. Um, and I think that, that that is what we need to see. This is at Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, rising consumer confidence. Is the economy growing stronger? Consumers are giving the economy a boost with year-end spending that's perked up the stock market and shored up the nation's bottom line. This much-needed activity offers hope for greater economic stability. But we're not out of the woods yet, says Economic Studies co-director Karen Dynan, as she dissects the reasons fueling this rise in consumer spending. Karen, do these recent trends in consumer spending mean that the worst is behind us? The hope is that this is you know, the initial stage of a self-sustaining recovery. But there are a couple of big caveats there. And, and, and one caveat is that, to some extent, um, the growth has been supported by consumer spending picking up before income really picked up. And that's, that's driven the saving rate down from about 5% to less than 4%. It's unclear that saving at that level is sustainable. So we may need to see, if we don't, if we don't see a pickup in hiring that um, boosts income, um, you know, this, consumers may not be able to continue as they have been. I would say the other caveat is a, is a general one. The economy is vulnerable to shocks. This has been a pattern since the, re, the recovery began several years ago that things seem to be, to be picking up, the economy seems to be gathering ahead of steam, and then some unexpected event happens. Oil prices rise. Um, an earthquake in Japan causes supply chain problems that causes workers to be laid off in this country. Fears about the European crisis have, have, have hurt confidence. So, so all these things, you know, we've seen a series of um, these shocks coming in over time. And with that, uh, we see confidence diminished. We see consumers less willing to spend and businesses less willing to hire. So it's not clear that we're out of the woods yet. Well, given those caveats and that the economy is still very uncertain, should people continue to spend? So to put things in perspective, you know, after the financial crisis, um, as a whole, um, for the nation as a whole, household balance sheets were very weakened. There was an enormous loss in wealth. There was uh, a huge debt overhang. And you know, over the last couple of years, we've made progress, again, for the nation as a whole, repairing that balance sheet. Some households have, began, have been able to reduce the amount of debt they've had and have able to, been able to rebuild their spending. For those households, it may make sense to go out there and um, do some more spending. But for other households, you know, they haven't made much progress. There are still a lot of households who have a lot of debt that needs to, um, that, that probably won't be sustainable over time. So that debt needs to be worked off. Um, there are households that have depleted their savings because of the hard economic times. They're not able to save and they've also probably drawn their savings down. Now, of course, we're hoping for the domino effect, more spending, an increase in production, and consequently more jobs. Do you think that's what's going to happen? The hope is that the pickup in demand we've seen this fall is going to lead to a virtuous cycle. So, so you know, demand increases, and then firms become more confident in the, the durability of the economic recovery. So they're, they're less cautious about hiring. They're more willing to go out there and, and add some new workers. That could, in turn, raise incomes, which would give people capacity to do yet more spending, and so on. So, so that's the hope that we'll enter a, a positive self-reinforcing cycle. You know, of course, confidence plays a big role. That suggests a risk because if we were to see confidence deteriorate again um, because of, uh, you know, say, increased fears about what's going on in Europe or maybe even just greater pessimism about policymakers' ability to grapple with key economic challenges, that could cause us to lurch backward as quickly as we, w we went forward. Arguably, people are more confident now that the economy is getting stronger and there might be some sustainability to this growth. But could it be, Karen, that people are just tired of austerity? When consumer spending perked up in the late summer, early fall, it actually was a bit of surprise because we'd seen 
wealth fall, we've seen income fall, confidence had deteriorated over, over the summer. So a lot of those usual determinants of consumer spending had weakened and yet spending picked up. Um, there are probably a couple of factors contributing to it. So one may be, in fact, a release of pent-up demand, as we economists would say. And the idea is just that there are limits to how much people can scrimp and save. Uh, you know, there's only so many times that you can wear that that t-shirt before it becomes too dingy and you need to throw it in the rag pile. Um, and then you need to go out and buy a replacement for it. So I think to some extent, we may well be seeing um, just a, a fatigue with, with austerity. Uh, but there are probably other factors contributing as well. So for example, credit conditions, they remain tight, it's hard to get loans, but they're relative to where they were, they've gotten a little better. So that's allowing people to, to finance more purchases than they've previously been able to. And what's the role of policymakers to sort of keep this trend going? We need to address our key um, you know, long-term fiscal challenges, the, the unsustainable, path that the deficit seems to be on, you know, as well as the need for um, entitlement reform. So those are the long-term challenges. In the short run, you know, it's, it's a harder situation because we don't have the kind of money to spend that we had several years ago when the economy first um, came into the recession. So we need to think about what steps that would be really well targeted. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu slash mobile.